Next story, folks, we're going to go into our time machine because um, today, Court TV released uh, for the first time since 2003 the North Carolina versus Michael Peterson trial. Why is that significant? Well, that was the subject of the um, Netflix series, The Staircase. Tens of millions of people watch The Staircase. Now you'll have an opportunity to actually watch the trial that happened back in 2003. Um, let's take a look back now in our little time machine as we return to The Staircase. When I think of Kathleen, um, 1810 Cedar Street, please. What's wrong? My wife had an accident. Unfortunately, he has her dying in my arms. Show them the stairs. Please, can you see That's always the overwhelming image. That's a clip from the wildly popular Netflix series, The Staircase, a behind-the-scenes look at a trial from 2003, North Carolina versus Michael Peterson, a case covered live on Court TV. And yes, that was me in Durham covering it. But the big question on a lot of people's minds is when did the members of his family first find out? What did you see that looked suspicious to you? One, I had a deceased person there, and then there was a large amount of blood that didn't look consistent with someone falling downstairs. Michael Peterson was accused of bludgeoning his wife Kathleen to death on a staircase inside their mansion. The defendant says that Kathleen Peterson's death was caused by a tragic accidental fall downstairs in their home. And we say, on the other hand, that she died a horrible, painful death at the hands of her husband, Michael Peterson. The most important piece of evidence in the trial, the staircase itself. And only one reporter got to see it before the trial. I've seen Vinnie Politan, Court TV, in that stairwell taking photographs. What about that? You know anything about that anyway? How did they get to, how did they get to do that? This is the staircase where Kathleen Peterson died that night. If you look at the bottom of the stairs, you can still see the blood stains. Now the prosecution says these stains are evidence of murder, but the defense says these same stains are evidence of a tragic accident. When I first got to see the staircase, I was pretty shocked. I'd been to crime scenes at other trials, but they had always been cleaned up. This one was preserved. The bloodstains were still there. It was obvious something really awful had happened here, but remember, it was Michael Peterson and his defense team who opened the door and showed me this, and they were convinced it was good evidence for them. The defense is saying that Kathleen Peterson was trying to get up the stairs that night, got up a few steps, but then fell backwards with her head hitting the corner of the entrance and then falling again, hitting her head one more time and bleeding to death at the bottom of the stairs. As a matter of fact, the defense created an animation which was shown to the jury to demonstrate exactly what they believed happened. This is one of the possibilities that that door jam, its shape and the, how, the, how high she fell from that step could have accounted for, for this injury. The prosecution's theory was also demonstrated to the jury by their blood expert, SBI agent Dwayne Deaver. But many viewers of the Netflix series, The Staircase, actually have a third theory. Somewhere during the trial, after the autopsy pictures were shown, that Larry thought that the wounds on Kathleen Peterson's head looked very much like bird tracks. The theory that a raptor caused those wounds is pretty persuasive. One of Peterson's neighbors did approach me at the courthouse during the trial to explain his owl theory, but since neither the prosecution nor defense was going with that theory, I didn't take it seriously, so I brushed it off, just like the prosecution and defense teams did. But now, that theory is one of the most talked about topics of the entire case, which to me is really ironic. We, the 12 members of the jury, unanimously find the defendant to be guilty of first-degree murder just the 10th day of October 2003. In the end, the jury rejected the defense accident theory at trial, but then the judge dismissed the prosecution theory eight years later because of the discredited testimony of Agent Deaver. The judge found Deaver had given misleading and false testimony about bloodstain evidence and had exaggerated his training and experience. Michael Peterson ultimately took an Alford plea with time served, which allowed him to go free 
without ever admitting to anything, which still leaves a huge question in this case unanswered. What really happened on that staircase? First, got to let you know, coming up a little bit later in the show, I'm going to debate David Rudolph, the attorney for Michael Peterson, on the so-called owl theory, which I dismissed then, and I'm still dismissing today. But let's bring in Julie Grant and Chanley Painter, who both watched the Netflix series The Staircase, who join us now. And, um, uh, yeah, there was a young reporter covering that years ago, Chanley. <laughs> um, but let me start. Uh, Julie, you, you saw it. What's your theory? What do you think happened in that staircase? I think it was a murder, Vinny. I really do. I loved your reporting there. Love that stand-up you did in that staircase showing all the blood, the blood and the story that that tells. Uh, the owl theory, certainly I can appreciate that, but where's the other evidence surrounding that? You would think if that occurred, it would occur outside of the mansion. And uh, it seemed that while there were some blood drops that were found outside on the patio, they were attributable uh, to what was said to be potentially uh, the murder weapon uh, involved in this case. Um, there was a theory on that, um, that the weapon was, it was a blowpipe that was pictured in the house and some photographs that the family had taken, but was never, ever recovered. And, and to me, just from the reading on it, and you know far more than I do about this case of any, I've just, you know, watched the, the Netflix series and read a little bit about it. Um, I lived in North Carolina for a time, and I know that was a case talked about for years after. But um, I think that it seems like Michael Peterson really had a motive. Uh, we know that there was a planned tryst uh, with a, a male prostitute, that he was bisexual and hiding that from his wife. We know that she was on their computer that night. At some point, his story didn't align with the story that uh, the forensic investigators found when they pulled everything from the computer as to the time. But perhaps she discovered what he was doing. Perhaps she discovered that tryst. And we know she had a $2 million life insurance policy as well. So perhaps there was a motive uh, for money and uh, for a relationship, or at least for sex. Uh, but I do think that the jury uh, seemed to have got it right. And um, I don't think it was any accident, Vinny. Uh, Chanley, your thoughts based on what you've seen in the, in the series and some of the evidence, what do you think happened there? Well, you know, Vinny, you're talking to three former prosecutors here, right? So we're going to obviously lean towards that side. It's a murder, right? But I think what is so appealing about this case is neither side, neither the prosecution or the defense could really tell a perfect story about what actually happened in that staircase. We had the prosecution saying, yes, it was murder, that he beat her to death with the blow poke from the fireplace. All of a sudden during the trial, the defense produces said blow poke, but has no blood on it. And the blood patterns according to the defense, didn't really match that theory. Then on the defense side, you have them saying, oh, she fell down the stairs. It's an accident. But then how does she have seven lacerations on her head? And oh, there's also a fracture in her neck that indicates she was strangled. So that's when this owl theory sort of comes in and you think, oh, that's ridiculous. But then maybe it makes sense if you look at it, Vinny, that that could have caused those injuries, the lacerations without skull fractures. And is it is it true? I don't. Maybe you can tell us that there was a microscopic owl feather found in her hand? Uh, that's what they're, they're saying. They didn't say owl feather. They just said a feather. Could have been from a pillow, maybe a down that's pillow. True. We shall see. Yep. Thank you both so much. Uh, I, I appreciate uh, your theories. And, and guess what? Coming up, I'm going to debate it with uh, David Rudolph. Um, also, got to let you know, this is the big story tonight. Here, on, It's like a historic day in Court TV. That trial now available on demand for free. Just go to CourtTV.com. You can watch the entire case. You watch the series. Why would you not want to watch the whole trial and make up your own mind? We'll be back.